Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to go back in time and watch Danielle and Muhammad. Let's watch. Thing to see is that she's going to come with everything she's got. You've got to come with she property. Has, she defenses. has nothing. I'm telling you. I, I'm the so I've been a part of the, I'm not a lawyer, but I've been with people, clients and others as they've gone through stuff like this. And the lawyer is trying to help his client, Muhammad. He's saying, look, she's going to come with a lot of different things. And so we've, we have to work on, and you have to work on how you're going to respond to each of those allegations. And Muhammad comes in hot and says, instead of thinking of this as essentially hearings are like a performance, it's not. It's not a. It's not even necessarily justice. It's about creating a, a convincing show of some kind. You know, it, I mean, it's not like a show. Like it can be like that, but it's more like you're. People take it too personally, and you need to be uh, logical and intentional and wise about it. And what a lot of people will do is what Muhammad is doing right now. He's just like, she doesn't have anything. You know, all of her arguments are stupid. And it's like, if that is your only argument, I, I worry about you. <laughs> like, you have to have strong evidence and provable things. Like, what do you have? Do you, do you have a journal entry or a picture of the two of you kissing and smiling or people who can vouch for you and say, no, no, he was in love with her. And he told me and in private that da, 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 you know, um, evidence that you did not cheat on her, uh, you know, give me things that will be convincing other than you just yammering and saying that all of her arguments are, are unreliable or invalid. And, uh, Muhammad is like shutting his lawyer down <laughs> and saying, like, so, um, you know, now maybe, he'll win in court. I, I imagine he might because the fraud case, according to um, Danielle's lawyer, is extremely hard to demonstrate. But um, uh, <laughs> Muhammad would do well by listening to his lawyer. That she did. Okay, you still want to make sure that you protected all of your rights. Yes. So she's coming with everything and you're going to be ready to defend yourself, right? Yes. It's very foolish that he is not being prepared for the evidence she's going to present against him. That's very foolish. Right. That's what I thought he was getting at, which is just saying that she's wrong is not a preparation for a legal hearing. You have to prepare. You got to get your ducks in a row. You got to start making. And the pride that you feel like, well, I'm not even going to entertain these arguments is potentially going to shoot yourself in the foot when you actually go to court. Realize how angry he was. And if that's the level of anger he's taking into this, it will have an effect on it. Because what he's trying to maintain is that uh, he's an innocent victim. And that person that I talked to is not going to appear as an innocent victim. Interesting. So he's telling us that Muhammad is declining counsel during the hearing, which, yeah, not wise. Maybe it's expensive it's, and he can't afford it. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, just this idea that, look, I'm just going to refute. I'm just going to say, no, that is not true. And she's lying. And, you know, we've seen these kinds of approaches before, like on people's court or Judge Judy or something. You see these people just coming to court thinking that if they just do their typical argumentative techniques, it's going to win the day when it, it, it's not how things work in courts. You can't just like say things. <laughs> you know, the judge is very uh, principled and hopefully and educated on like you can say anything you want, but you have to demonstrate it. And so it looks like Muhammad is just heading in there saying, well, Whatever she says, I've got a counter argument for her. And, and the judge is going to be like, where's your proof? Just go ahead and convert it to a divorce. Even with all my evidence, the judge said it would be very hard for me to win if it goes to trial. Because of what the judge said, my lawyer advised me to settle today on a divorce. Yeah, that's what her lawyer was essentially saying from the very beginning. So, you know, okay, now she knows that the lawyer was correct and that demonstrating fraud is hard and she doesn't really have any strong evidence that he, at the time of the 
wedding was not intending on having a marriage with her. No more hearings. No more hearings. So you're divorced from this Because we got a divorce, it will be more difficult to get him deported. In the eyes of the court, our marriage just didn't work. You can start moving. Well, to be more specific, I think what a legal expert would say, and I'm not one, is that the court doesn't see the marriage as valid. They just see lack of evidence of it being a fraud. Just because I did not prove that he committed fraud does not mean he did not commit it. It does hurt that I couldn't prove fraud because I feel like no one's ever going to believe me. I think a lot of people believe you. And, you know, and I've talked with so many people about things like this. Usually it's custody battles or divorces, you know, over money or alimony or something. And what I tell people is do not look toward the court to validate something that you believe because you probably will not be satisfied. Um, you can take legal action if it makes logical sense to you and you want to do that, but emotionally do not depend on the legal system to make you feel better. Um, you've seen too many movies. In the movies, there are so many court hearing movies involve justice and retribution and vindication and glory and winning and yes, now the world knows I was right. Uh, I would say 99% of the time, maybe more than that, uh, court, especially these kinds of hearings, do not provide that. And it makes sense that if you believe it was a fraud, if you believe that he was using you, if you believe that he never really loved you and you're very hurt and your friends and family believe you, which they do, just bank on that. And I think a lot of viewers believe that too. Uh, not everyone, of course, but I don't know, at least half or something. So, you know, may, some validation on that level. But of course, no one knows. It's, it's an unanswerable question. None of us can know what he was thinking in his heart and feeling in his heart uh, when they met and when they got married. Uh, there's evidence or there's vibes or things pointing towards something, but there's just no way to know. And how can Danielle move forward and heal and grieve given that fact that there's just no way to know and there's no way to definitively prove? And even if the court did agree, I, I would argue that doesn't prove that he it was it was a fraud. It just says that a, a judge happened to agree with you. It doesn't, you know, plenty of courts will find things and decide on things that later on are determined to be, um, you know, not true. So, you know, but I get it. And I, I wish someone would have just told her that barking up the tree of the legal system to justify how you feel is, is not wise. He's making himself look like an ass and people are going to think he's crazy. Yeah. He's a dip Inside the courthouse, Muhammad had his phone still talking live, and he told security officers that he don't feel safe. Who does that? Someone who's been a victim, that's who. Uh, someone who's trying to avoid getting into more trouble. And it's like having a badge cam or something, you know? It's just like, I don't want any ambiguity. I'm going to record the whole thing because I've been burned before. I'm going to show if, you know, if anything happens, I'll have evidence that, um, you know, I was just trying to do the right thing. So, you know, I, it's probably smart to, to do that, actually. It looks weird, but it's, you know, looks weird to them, but it's probably a smart choice. And it probably keeps people away because if there were no cameras, of course, the TV show is filming the whole thing, but... It um, might keep people away from creating drama and triggering him to do something, and then they could make a claim, and then that could jeopardize his ability to stay in the States. I feel like he treated the divorce like a joke, like he's treated our marriage for the last two and a half years. It was nothing but a big joke to him. This marriage was real for me, even though he conned me, he manipulated me. It was real for me. Yeah, if it's true that he did con her, 
I mean, at the very least, you could say he skipped out of the relationship. Well, I don't know the way that she, the way the allegations that he brought up of the way she treated him. I think leaving would make sense. We don't know if that's what really happened, but but yeah, I mean, if it was, if she was at least somewhat conned, yeah, it's hurtful. You get angry and you want to let him have it. Um, but is it wise to interface with him at this point? Like, is that going to help you? Well, let's see what happens. I do want to say something to him. Because you might have your chance right now. Uh, what? What? I think we need to meet and talk later. Enough. Okay? Yeah, it's interesting. So she's talking with her friend, and Danielle's like, I'm angry and, you know, I have things to say. And then the friend says, well, now's the time. Go say something, which I wouldn't have told Danielle to do that. And so Danielle is like, I'm going to go tell, you know, give him a piece of my mind. And she gets over there and she's like, we have to meet and talk. About what? You know, like, what do you think is going to happen? It's more of that hope of reuniting with him. Some... And again, it makes sense. She misses him. She loved him and might, still has feelings for him. And it's normal. But the fact that she can't sift through that and differentiate from that feeling and look at that and say, like, no, no, it's over. We're divorced. He hates me, clearly. And our relationship is completely in shambles, even friendship. So why would we meet? <laughs> what would What would be the purpose of that? But... You know, when you're in love with someone and, and you're infatuated and you, you just irrationally want contact with them, even though it shoots you in the foot. And I get that, you know, relationship breakups are messy. So I just some I just wish someone were there to be like, well, it doesn't do you any good to do this. I, I understand the impulse, but one, he's not going to agree to it. And two, like, it's just you're just you're harming yourself by continuing to bark up that tree. You have my number, you can't text me. When are you supposed to go back? I w I'm gonna stay until this evening, okay? All right. <laughs> that was telling him her peace of mind. She went over there and said, let's meet up. And when are you leaving town? <laughs> Uh, you know, she, she's going through something, so I, I guess it's good that she didn't scream at him. I mean, there's there's nothing good that could come from that. So it's just odd that that's what ended up happening because she was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna, I have things to say, and I'm gonna, you know, give him a piece of my mind," and then asks him when he's leaving town. It's like he made a joke of the day. But you know what? You're rid of him now. You're free. I know I made the right decision about the divorce, but I can't help but feeling like I gave in to Muhammad by giving him the divorce instead of the annulment. Again, normal to have that feeling of he got what he wanted. He wanted to come here to the States, and I believe that he conned me, and so he he won, and so I'm going to, that's going to eat me up inside. You know, it's normal to have that impulse, I think, uh, for many people in a situation like this, but I just hope she has someone to talk to and be like, look, that's just how it is. And acceptance is the goal here. It might take you a while, but I don't think you could, I don't think continuing to grind your gears on this issue is, is just doing you harm. Again, I get the feeling that we can't, when we have these feelings, when we have this pain, when we have this anger, it's, it's going to manifest and that's normal. I just wish she had, because it seems like everyone around her is just, I don't know, fanning the flames to some extent. I feel like he got what he wanted again. Danielle, look what Mohammed just posted on his Facebook page. It says, And friend, why are you fanning the flames? Why are you looking at us while you're driving, by the way, which is illegal and extremely dangerous? You're looking on his Facebook page and saying, look what he just posted. No, move forward. You're going to have the feelings anyway. Why add to it? I am divorced. Boy, not even been an hour since we've been out of court. Yes, it's a fact. 
he is divorced and he's celebrating it because he was about to be deported and there were all sorts of problems that you were creating. So yeah, he should be celebrating that. It's rational for him to celebrate that with his friends and family. They're happy for him because of what you've been doing the, and pr allegedly the abuse that you've put him through. So just move on. Don't look at his Facebook page, block it. Just, you know, you're gonna have, it's gonna take a while to get over it. Don't fan the flames by looking at his Facebook page. About, again, he just stated a fact. He didn't say, I divorced that B word. He's just like, I am divorced. He's just a, a statement. Of, he's informing everyone because they were all wondering what, what the outcome would be. Hey, deserving listeners. As y'all know, I am constantly recommending that people go to therapy. We all need therapy from time to time. Well, one of the options available that is definitely worth checking out is BetterHelp. If you're looking for a therapist, I would give it a try by going to betterhelp.com slash Kirk. Make sure you use the promo code Kirk because you get 10% off your first month and it really helps us out. As you watch these videos, I know many of you have been motivated to find your own therapist, which is great because you deserve it. And I know also that it can be hard to find a good fit, find the right one for you. Well, one of the options available in terms of your shopping is to go to betterhelp.com slash Kirk. I've been told you can start communicating with your therapist in under 24 hours. You can message your counselor at any time. Plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. I've also been told that it's often less expensive than in-person therapy, and you should know that this service is available to clients worldwide. So go to betterhelp.com slash Kirk to get 10% off your first month today. Yeah. It's hurtful. He couldn't even give me a day just to process it. Again, I get the feelings, but what are you talking about? He's not supposed to post, he's not supposed to tell anyone that he got divorced. He's supposed to give you a day to process, process, process what exactly? Uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's that logical difficulty that she had, the difficulty with logic that she seems to have and differentiation, diff, you know, difficult differentiation, the, the ability to say like, well, I shouldn't have looked at his Facebook page and he's a jerk face but he is stating something that's just factual and everyone's going to find out eventually anyway. So, you know, it hurts, but let's move forward. So instead of that, it's just like, what's wrong with him? He did something, you know, immoral or unethical by informing his friends and family about something that just happened in reality. You know, I, so not only is she suffering, but she seems to lack the cognitive or differentiated skill to help her get through it more easily. I haven't even talked to my kids, to my siblings, so they're gonna find out from social media what has happened. And it's not right. It's not right or wrong. It's It just is what it is and, and, yeah, I mean, again, I, I didn't think that would be the sentiment. I, I guess I get the impulse of this is humiliating to me. I told everyone that I was going to win and they were all hoping I would win, and but I lost. That's the narrative that her, she and her family have seemingly. And okay, I get that. That's like, oh, like I, I, I wanted to tell him on my terms. Uh, one, you know, that, and I, I get that, but at the same time, it's like, well, you can't control information. You can't bar him from informing the, him and his people. The other thing is you're assuming that your family looks at his Facebook. <laughs> like, I, they probably just don't even care. Uh, I don't know. But, and if they did find out from social media, are they going to be like disappointed? Like, Danielle, I found out from social media. How come you didn't inform me first? She could be like, I don't know. I just, so, I don't know. It, I just wish she, she, apparently she doesn't have people around her be like, look, let's go watch a movie. Let's put it, let's try to keep our mind. Let's not look at his Facebook. In fact, let's block him so you don't have to look at him anymore. So you don't have the triggers. Uh, in fact, she has a friend driving, looking at Facebook and then feeding Danielle this information. I do want to talk to him one last time to tell him what I feel right now and to finally let go of him. Yeah, I've been with people like this before and I would say, okay, you know, I get that. 
um, what would you like to say? You know, let's role play it. And then, you know, they say, well, I don't know what I would want to say. And I'd be like, okay, so what is it that you're looking for? Is it just contact with them? Do you have some kind of fantasy in your mind as to, you know, not a not that I'm making fun of you, but do you have some sort of prediction about what it would feel like if you had some sort of satisfactory unleashing of information towards him? Because it's possible that you're chasing something that just isn't possible to catch. Um, the other thing is, is, or are you trying to get contact with him? You know, um, you know, so let's say she did say, okay, this is the thing, these are the things I want to say. And then I would say, okay, well, how do you think he's going to react? And a lot of people that are undifferentiated, they'll be like, I don't know how he's going to react because they, they can't really get out of their own feelings. Be like, well, you know, so you said those things. How, how do you think they'll react? And then if they were able to, and I might even suggest if they weren't able to, I'd be like, well, he'll probably say, are you done because I want to move on with my life? How would you feel, Danielle, if that's what he said? And she'd be like, well, I'd be upset. And I'd be like, well, then you're looking for something that isn't going to happen. You know, it sounds like what you're hoping is that he'll apologize, that he'll say he's sorry, that, you'll, that he'll say he loved you, that he'll say, yes, it was fraud or something that will really satisfy you. He's not going to say those things. So stop trying to, you know, catch that because you're not going to, it's not attainable. And... It doesn't seem like anyone is there to help her with that. I'm worried that my girls will be disappointed that it's a divorce instead of an annulment. I'm guessing that your daughters don't give a crap. <laughs> I'm guessing that, I, mean, I don't know, but I'm guessing that they're just like, can we just never talk about him again and put this behind us? That, but we'll see what they say. So we are officially divorced today. I'm surprised that she did decide to do, have a divorce and stuff because she was so set on the annulment. I just hope that like finalizing a divorce like completely cuts off contact between them. Right. That's what I. That's what I thought. I, I don't think they're interested in revenge. Uh, not nearly as much as other family members. I think they're just like, could we just like not ever deal with this again? Could we just act like this never happened? How did you feel seeing Muhammad today? I really didn't feel nothing seeing him, but then he has to go and plaster it less than an hour after we're out of court that he's divorced. Mm -hmm. So I am going to go meet him here in a little bit because I have some things to say to him. Why do you have to talk to him about? So once again, if I didn't know the relationships between these people and I didn't have a visual on age, I would think that a younger person, like a, I don't know, just a younger person is coming to her older siblings or her aunts or something because we're, you know, if we think about the hierarchy right now, at least with some of the kids, that the kids seem above her. Now, sometimes that's okay when Especially, I don't know how they're, they look like they're at least in their upper teens, maybe early 20s, that sometimes, you know, there's a bit of a role reversal and, and you take care of your parents. But it should be more frequent that it's that there's a hierarchy in which the mom is the one taking care of and attuning to you, the, the kids. Um, and we've seen some red flags of parentification and of dependency in Danielle, childishness, type of dependency that she didn't wake up in the morning and decide that's how she wants to be. It's from traumas and other kinds of issues. And so we're just seeing another a tiny piece of evidence of parentification and essentially emotional neglect uh, with the kids because they're the ones seemingly frequently taking care of her instead of it being mostly the other way around. There's just some things I want to get off my chest. Like what? You're literally gonna go there and you're gonna come back and it's just gonna end stupidly. And they have the best advice, unlike the friend who's fanning the flames and the other people who are like, you know, make sure you get revenge, kick him out. They're just like, why are you even contacting him? It, it, what good is that gonna prove? So it's just another uh, piece of evidence that they're used to having to be the wise, mature ones in this relationship. 
he thinks she'll get some sort of closure from it. Like she'll, he'll say sorry or something like that, but I don't think he'll ever do something like that. And it's just gonna hurt her more than she already is. Ding, ding, ding. I mean, she would know a lot better than I would, but um, yeah, that's the way it looks to me as well. Absolutely. Looking for an apology, that's not gonna happen. Looking for some kind of closure, it's not gonna happen. Looking for some kind of thing that's gonna happen that's gonna make this all feel better. No, it's just, it's just a, it's a compulsion that people feel when there's a breakup. They're just like, well, if it, it's this, it, it, they miss the person and they long for that person and they don't know how to interpret it. So they, their conscious mind says, well, but I have a few things to say, you know, I just need to get some things off my chest. But in reality, what they're trying is they're trying to have a love connection again, which their conscious mind knows that's just not possible. This is something I have to do for me, it is. I want to say goodbye on my terms, not on his terms. Okay, and breakups are messy and all right. And you know, if this is the way it's gotta be, then I guess make it happen. Um, I, I can't imagine that she's gonna walk away going like, and there we go, I feel okay. I, it's but. Breakups are messy and people are messy and relationships are messy and, you know, that's just the way that it is. All right. Well, that is it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.